this is the exact chart that I ended up showing back from the from late January when I first you know made my or when I when I made my first video on Bitcoin. So at the time it was beginning to pull back towards 34.5 here, and I was not hypothesizing that this would be the bottom. This is simply the midway point between past major support, roughly off of 40,000, and then the, and then the next major support, which was and still is roughly off of 29,000 here from back over the summer of last year. So with that said, it ended up bottoming out right it did hold that midway point which was pretty odd to see i wasn't expecting such a clean hold but more so than anything my talking point on bitcoin over the last i don't know two months nearly at this point getting close to back from january 20th i think that video was back from uh you know it's to say we need to see support above forty thousand. We need to see support above the, um, and I know, I know this is a 200 EMA. I should have flipped that to a 500. So, you know, typically roughly off of 40,000 has been a major support level recently, but we need to see 40,000 hold because that's right where the 500 EMA is. And that's what I've been harping on so frequently the last couple of months, right? And there have been several points where it's teased that, you know, the snap off the chart, uh, snap off the trend line uh, to say, you know, based off the run up it made, actually, I was anticipating on support looking to hold. Unfortunately, it did not. From there, again, another quick snap back above support. In this case, it ended up running into the 200 EMA from the daily and then came right back down. And now we're heading into the FOMC. So, you know, going into Wednesday afternoon, once the Fed reaches its decision regarding the interest rates, we're going to see a lot of action just not only across Bitcoin, across the whole markets, across the U.S. dollar index in particular. That's something I do want to focus on as well at the end of this. But, you know, that's been my talking point. 40,000, 40,000. If we're not going to hold 40,000 as a critical support, just like I teach in stocks, right? You know, for Gary and for all of us live here, if it's not breaking higher, there's only one other way it's going to go. That's It's as simple as that. It doesn't need to be so complicated all the time. Actually, to be very transparent, actually, for uh, March 14th, Monday this morning, Fausto ended up doing a, uh, a webinar, a free introductory to day trading webinar. Uh, and he was you know, really harping on how indicators are lagging behind the order flow. And of course, nonetheless, I show all these indicators, right? <laughs> so when it comes to charting long term, I do. I personally like some technical analysis, but I am going to show our heat map level four uh, for Bitcoin here coming up. And it's going to reflect what happens if the markets begin to or, or, or continue to fall fall off, if, if anything, begin to cap, uh, capitulate. But nonetheless, on Bitcoin, I would anticipate to see support as low as 24.5 right around 29 here, at least, if we happen to see bad results coming off the Fed meeting. Now, I, I do want to show a couple of other charts, because if that's the case, well, you know, I'm not going to go into specific altcoins right now, like Ethereum, Dogecoin, Cardano, you know, not doing that here today. It's to say, though, as a whole, well, here's the Bitcoin dominance chart. And, you know, I've been following this really actually with most of us in, inside our live trading room over the last year and a half. I've shown this infrequently, but over the last year and a half, I've shown this at times showing Bitcoin's correlation or relationship with the rest of the other uh, cryptos out there. So with that said, I just want to show you, I mean, hey, it's, uh, it's really coming close to the 200 EMA. This is on a daily chart as well. So it's to say when this when this moves up, that means that Bitcoin's, you know, moving faster in relation to the other altcoins or it's you know, healthier in relation to the other altcoins. So what happens if the market falls off? Well, Bitcoin's going to drop. Well, as the same time as that will happen, if this begins to have an outbreak above the 200 EMA on the daily, that simply means that the altcoins are going to crap out way worse compared to Bitcoin. So if you're sitting in, in an altcoin right now, Doge, Cardano, uh, you know, whatever it may be, I would be really careful, uh, you know, over the next few weeks, next month. I mean, you know, look what's happened even since the beginning of this year, since mid to late Jan, we've seen the Bitcoin dominance chart begin to, you know, move off support to which I was hoping it would break, but it did not. So with that said, you know, what happens here when it begins to break above the 200 EMA here, like we had back in July of 2018? Well, it led to a huge run up. If that happens while the markets fall off, that's extra trouble for the, uh, for the altcoins as a whole. 
All right. Now, something else just really quickly, and this is actually um, in relation to the overall markets, let alone crypto as a whole. So, you know, if you're inside the live trading room right, right now on this live stream as I'm doing this, uh, you know, analysis, if you're not interested in crypto, that's a OK. But I do want to show you the U.S. dollar index. So with that said, I have noticed at least over the last year to two years when we've seen that, you know, the U.S. dollar index is moving up and up and up and up and up. That's where we tend to see the overall markets begin to fall off a little bit or Bitcoin in particular. So that's where I'll say, look what happened back from July, August time of 2014. Once the U.S. dollar index ended up breaking higher, well, we ended up seeing a huge run up. I have a FIB retracement chart on this year just from bottom to top. So that's where I could at least say, well, once it topped off. It had pulled back down to the 50% retracement. And then recently, it's had a little struggle in between, but it just slingshotted back above the 38.2. And that was back from the beginning of 2021. So with that said, if we happen to see a bigger push over time on the US dollar index, which it does seem likely, um, that could be some extra trouble altogether for the S&P. That could be some extra trouble altogether for Bitcoin. So that's something else that I'm keeping an extra careful eye on. All right. Um, oh, and lastly, actually, before I finish up this meeting here really quick, I do want to show the um, the level four, the heat map for Bitcoin in particular. So this is the Coinbase exchange. I can cycle through a few different exchanges, including futures contracts. So it's to say at least, you know, obviously we need to hold above 40,000 and have needed to. So it's not looking good. If we happen to see Bitcoin really tank and fall off you know to be transparent today as the s p and the dow have fallen off from the morning bitcoin's dropped off but it actually hasn't fallen off as well or as steadily compared to the uh, major indices which was pretty interesting i mean directions down but not as extensive uh, as much as the dow and the s p so it's just to say, if we happen to get a real big overnight slam on Bitcoin, maybe they're kind of accumulating short positions, anticipating the drop, just to you know, shoot from the hip thought. Well, it's to say, where could we find potential support initially here? Well, we have a stack of orders that have been building up right around 32,000, 31,000. This right here is roughly off of 30,000. So I'd anticipate for this support, this range, to act as a potential safety net. Does that mean it's going to hold right above the top here? 35,000? No. I mean, do, do I hope it does? Yeah, but altogether, at least, if we happen to see this continue to fall off, it wouldn't shock me if we happen to see it fall closer towards the bottom of this net, maybe right around 30,000, maybe right around 31,000, to which I end up seeing a little volume getting pulled from the book here recently over the last few days. This is kind of new to me. I'm, I'm just kind of recognizing this right now for the first time. From back on March 9th, we ended up seeing at least a little volume getting pulled from the bid slowly but surely. It continued to get pulled you know, over the you know, uh, successive days. So with that, as we're beginning to see some potential support get pulled, Think of that as the floor getting pulled from underneath you. I mean, that doesn't sound good, right? So again, if you're long on Bitcoin, especially before the Fed meeting, I'd be really careful. Uh, and then otherwise, at a minimum, we'll just see what happens after the Fed finishes up on uh, 2.30 Eastern time on Wednesday, January, or January, on Wednesday, March 16th. And we'll uh, do another video similar to what we're doing right now and post it on our YouTube channel. All right.